I thought I'd do a quick video on a vehicle that came in that a uh, customer was saying wasn't uh, operating properly. Um, showing you the engine here. If you guys could tell what that is, that is a four cylinder Cummings, a 4BT. It was a 4BT swap in a uh, V10 Gasser 2500. They did a pretty good job. Uh, whoever did this motor swap. Um, and the customer purchased it from the person who did the swap so he didn't get much information or didn't know what to ask about to uh, figure out you know what all the bugs were or the ghosts were in this thing so he bought it as a complete unit and then noticed that it was lacking power um, he took it to a couple of shops in town they said the engine was fine and left it at that um, so Kind of a little quiz here. They made it to the original 47RE. That uh, 47RE is an electronically controlled transmission. So um, looking at it, I saw that, well, how's that going to work? Um, if they didn't do a standalone controller or try to fake out some of the inputs that the transmission needed. So. I'm shining here the, the camera at uh, one of the most important things for the 47RE. It needs to have a throttle position sensor. So this is a, a TPS that I put in. This is an aftermarket one um, that I purchased. And also uh, I'll talk about the standalone transmission controller for the 47RE. This is the, the plug for the 47RE. It uh, requires eight inputs. Uh, it's an eight eight prong here. So uh, it's the R. This is the RE. So again, electronically controlled, and it needs to know quite a few things, um, including the throttle. So anyway, this was that. That was kind of a a big job here because they had this set up. The, the way the throttle was set up on this was a, a different way. It was positioned from here, coming, pulling in. Um, I still have a another thing I need to do, which I'll do later. This transmission has a kick down cable. Um, so there's a kick down cable, the throttle, and then the cruise control. But for now, um, I'm going to leave the kick down disconnected. And uh, as you could see, it was just a simple bracket here with this uh, TPS and then this piece here to operate the throttle just so the transmission knows the throttle position right there. See that? Okay. So that's a little tricky. And then, of course, the other hard part is figuring out what standalone controller to use. Uh, we use this one here, eTrans Control, and they provided the TPS sensor. Also, so the whole setup was about um, $800 and about a day of labor. Uh, most of, well, actually a little more. There was a lot of ghosts and things trying to figure out what what I was dealing with here, um, building the bracket and figuring out what's going on. Um, so let's just kind of go through a couple things here. Um, so there's a, a harness, and then you get a you get the controller, and then you get the display. So everything's somewhat pretty straightforward. On the side of the controller here, uh, this is the TCM 430. This is, I think, the the fully automatic one that has some ability to control um, some of the function of that transmission. So a couple things here. Um, take this key out. So pretty straightforward. One of the wires here is uh, ignition on. The rest of this here goes plugs into the transmission. I'll go over that. These three here are from the TPS. Um, and they're fully marked on the instruction manual. I'll go over that here in a second. One of the things, if you end up buying this product, uh, one, 
1 is up here, so 1 through 12. So these are those inputs. I'll just kind of go over a few things. This is that TPS, universal TPS. This is what you get, which is what I, I have here. I, I changed one of the brackets to a metal bracket back here. And then modified the linkage to get essentially this effect because it's a pullback. And probably could have done this a different way too. Um, so that's the TPS, those three wires. Uh, five volt in, five volt out, and ground, or it's zero to five for the for the out. And just a couple things. So the instructions here are pretty straightforward. Um, let's go over kind of the important stuff, just in case you really want to just jump in and and mess with this. All right. So for that TPS, and then this is the diagram for the one through twelve. Um, so three TPS in 11 TPS out so that's that blue wire and then ground and then again it doesn't show it on there but one is up here on this particular unit down to 12 down here all right so that's pretty straightforward that's that plug kind of see that that's going back in if you're working on this truck um, I just went ahead and went in right through here this would have been on a uh, if this was a manual and, and I'll talk about a manual transmission here in a second so anyway that's went through the firewall there and then I went ahead and matched up the wires the easiest way as as they kind of show in this diagram right here is to look at it this way and follow it around and then I'll also show you another trick and actually how to do this so right now I have this truck working with just alligator clips um, you can just buy a pack of alligator clips order them however you want to get them uh, you're gonna need eight and then you're gonna need a few other uh, jumpers so that you can get the neutral safety working too on this and I'll show you what I did to get that going but anyway so once you know what the numbers are so let's say you're working on this okay so one one is there and you can just look at this here and one will match up the harness and he's got the colors matched up pretty well and then you go two, which is orange. And then on his controller, I say his, the provide manufacturer for E trans control, the orange goes to the gray. All right. So just a few other things here, super quick, just in case, help anyone out that's wanting to do this. So currently, that is how I I just had it set up this way, just to validate that everything was working correctly. So these are just jumpers. I know this looks like a crazy mess. I'm going to pull this plug out of here. Of course, nothing goes super smoothly when you're trying to record. not going to edit this either so so that's what I did um, I think the recommendations on the manual says don't cut all the wires um, it's up to you and I bought a uh, pigtail also that uh, the manufacturer also provides maybe I would have given myself a little bit more here so 
This is the harness provided by the manufacturer. And then again, I just jumped them to this matching there. So now if just a few things. There's also a speed sensor connection. It's these two wires on the harness. And then those go to here on the transmission. And then I jumped another one back to the harness just to get the vehicle to start, which was back here uh, for the neutral. I think it's the neutral safety uh, position selector and then back to the original harness which is right there. I probably have more connected than I need. I don't remember which wire it was that it needed to know the selection. You know, and I didn't validate uh, Yeah, I think that's it right here. So these are the wires back to the original harness. So I probably could have just left those on. That's probably what I could have done, is left those connected to the position here, and that would have worked, continued working. So I think I just went a little. A little ambitious cutting. So that's probably maybe that that would have been the improvement was just to leave that and then the controller handles the rest so anyway now i just need to button all these up so i'll go ahead and connect each one again um, put them together solder them put a heat shrink on them so the the manual here from the provider goes and explains. Oh, here it is. This is that output speed sensor. The two wires, so that's that's over here on that position, that 47RE, so that's what I jumped and then connected it to the harness. And then here's the range selector. So that would have been um, to know what position the transmission's in. So anyway, there's a couple other options too on this. Um, you guys can look that up. You can um, kind of see here. I think he's got this all on his website too so you can uh, set this up also and have like an override for the torque converter clutch engage or disengage so anyway some options there for you um, got it working and like I said I road tested it and shifted through all the gears properly um, good enough for what the customer wanted and then some other options for the configuration and there's a configuration screen um, I won't go into all of that but that was uh, about $800 plus a couple days labor to get the 47 RE to work and then some folks are like well just put a manual transmission and that's just something you guys are gonna have to decide you know what's the best way to do it I mean if the truck was an original manual transmission truck I think that's a different option might be a better option but if it was an original automatic and that's what you want a standalone controller is definitely uh, something that can solve your problem a couple other little things here you could see that the person solved before so you can look at this and you see that this truck brakes is going to be operated by vacuum if it was a original diesel truck um, then it would be hydraulic for the power um, so then that becomes problematic and you can see here that there's a vacuum pump on here 
to give the brake booster vacuum. So again, just some things to consider um, if you're doing a 4BT swap um, in, in a vehicle that's originally a gas, you know, is what you're going to do with vacuum. And if, um, depending on what vehicle it is, probably figuring out how you're going to get some inputs, uh, primarily the, the throttle position sensor, and then if you use a standalone controller, I think you're home free with everything else. So there she is. It's a now functioning 4BT in an original gasser V10. Um, works pretty well. Just some minor issues that still need to be resolved for cruise control. The transmission kicked down. I haven't seen what the standalone controller is doing for anything like that um, or if that needs to operate, which it obviously needs to because this is a mechanical kick down. So I can modify something here and uh, it actually needs to be, since this is a pull, actually the same position would probably work. So I could do something, not sure. Anyway, not, not the scope of this video here. This is more just uh, putting in a standalone controller there's a bunch of manufacturers out there. We use these folks. They're pretty good, pretty reasonable. This whole setup was about 800. Um, can't remember exactly, but right around 800 bucks. And I, I ordered this extra pigtail from them, um, and the throttle position, which it looks like here they use the GM style. All right. Well, thank you for watching.